So, I thought I would do a video of something I made this weekend. It was pretty cool. Um, so I was, I usually go out in the fall time to do hiking sticks, um, to find them. And, uh, made this one. It's very, very super light and it's not even dried out yet fully, but, um, so this, this one's got a large opening in it. That's hollow. <coughs> All the way down to I tested it with a skewer yesterday the hollow part goes all the way to right here so it's pretty cool it cuts down on a lot of the weight of this stick so I'm about five ten so that one came out pretty nice I haven't done a video yet of the one I made for uh, for Jesus and I also have one I made for me and my wife and I was thinking about giving it to Rhonda though because I told her I'd give her and her husband a pair and I think it's just a nice nice set I do I've done a couple for like weddings and stuff like that matching sets and things like that the ones I have upstairs are like the ones I have upstairs are like this one um, but they kind of like hug each other like that so it's pretty cool this one right here is super light. This one is my one of my favorites. It's got like this deep, the color isn't even close to what it really is because this phone is terrible, but um, some of the moss is still on there and stuff. Um, but all this is like super smooth. And this is uh, got knots all the way down it. So, I mean, if it was for like protecting yourself, like if you were a shepherd, oh my goodness, this thing is deadly. It's like super sharp. Look at the edges on that. Um, but yeah, it's like really, really nice. And I put a bicycle tire piece on here, like army ranger bands. You can burn these and uh, start a fire with them. So I put that on there. It's a really nice grip on that. Actually, some of the best work, like coolest spots on this are underneath this piece, but it's a good handhold. All right, so I made this one. This weekend, it was actually part of that. So I just made that this weekend too, it was part of this. So like, look, this was kind of like that in the woods. I didn't have to hollow it out, it was already hollow. So something like that. So <clears throat> this is how I'm, I choose my steps, is like how it will be for you walking by. See how it recesses almost all my staffs they recess so you don't kick it when you're walking and it kind of has an arc to it but this one's cool because it was already hollow inside but i had to i had to scoop this with my bowl scoop and then so watch and i do not celebrate halloween and i don't want to really get any comments about like you know anyone saying it's great for halloween because i don't think it is but i think they're awesome for actually functioning hiking sticks so that globe thing i just put in there it's like something you can just buy online you can charge it with a usb and then once you shut it off it has its own light that just glows for a while so at night i already tested this hold on i'll turn this light off real quick so you can kind of see it hold on Oop. all right so i mean in pitch black like at night, that actually lights the whole path in front of you. It's really nice. So that's one of the hiking sticks I just made. And then I'll show you the candle holder. Oh, this is one of my favorites too. This is like, I called this the Irishman. You can actually light a fire in this recess in there. Like if you want to do a bird's nest. So come up here, there's a nice knot right there and uh, a lot of nice knots all the way up. I left some of the bark on there. It's got a really nice pattern. And then I usually just do it like something nice on the top right here, just smooth. But all my sticks are natural. I don't use um, like varnish. I use, I guess natural, I say natural, but I use petroleum jelly on this and just, um, 
it seals it and then I smooth it out with um, 2000 grit sandpaper. In case anybody wants to make their own at home. Um, and I tend to leave the bark on most of mine, some of the bark in different levels uh, so that it gives it some grip and obviously the, the pattern looks cool. Like these two that are purple, it's because they haven't dried out yet. But for the most part, this will probably turn like pink, if anything. It'll be pinker. It'll lighten up. Um, and then these are these are some pretty cool ones too. Because you can, hold on, let me get this glow thing out of my hand. So you can kind of like grab the stick from basically anywhere. Like up here if you're taller, or right here. And it's got some, it's got some play to it. So, I mean, I'm 200 pounds, and I, I'm leaning on this thing hard, and it won't, it won't give. So I mean, and I mean from from here, I can reach there. So I mean, if you wanted to, you know, jump across a pond or something, or I mean, a little stream or something, you probably could. It's pretty got a pretty nice arc to it. It's super strong. I love those kind. I gave my neighbor one like that. It's very hard to find them that thin, um, that thin all the way down to that thickness. I don't know why they don't usually grow like that. They're usually pretty, pretty even all the way up. Um, so this is the, well, this is my bonsai tree. If you want to see that, I thought it was going to die on me. And then it's, I brought it inside and it's like going awesome. It's just like flourishing. And I got that almost everything I have. I got on free on Craigslist or at the dump. This stand I got at the dump. This cherry table I got on Craigslist free. <clears throat> I'm like a free nut because my house burnt down a while back. But that's me and my wife Jackie. That's where we got married on Lake Winnipesaukee in Wolfboro, New Hampshire. And our nine year anniversary is coming up. That's my daughter Faith. My wife, Jackie, and I don't have kids together. Um, I had two kids previously, and that's my daughter, Faith. And that's my son, Riley, on the right with the mohawk. And that's me, and uh, that's Jackie, my wife. That's her little brother. So <laughs> her brother and my son are about the same age, and they're really good friends, so it's pretty cute. Um, so this is my candle holder I made and it just happened to like sit perfectly on the table like this so I'll show you the other side it's pretty nice looking let me take these candles out real quick I try to throw in like a lot of woodworking stuff on here too that's why I wrote my name as the carpenter's son because you know we are we are all the carpenter's children and that's what I meant by it but um, I like to do carpentry also and I my dad really is a carpenter so I really am the carpenter's son also <laughs> it's like a, oh, a triple entendre I think I don't know if I said that right so right here when it was coming out of the ground split a little bit right there it ticked me off but so it's hollow all the way through and I picked up that deep purple color and then and this took me like to scoop it because it was already like it was made it was it grew out of the ground this way it was already like hollow and rotted all in here was all rotted so this took me about an hour to scoop and it, with my bowl scoop that I got on Etsy from one of the major companies on there really good company I can't think of the name of it sorry um and yeah just. Then I had to take all this bark off with my knife. And here, this whole edge was curled over. And in certain spots, it was super thick. So, like, down here, it was very hard to take that off. But, see, here is pretty smooth except for that one spot. And I don't want to mess with it because it'll, it might damage the wood. But I don't want to sand it too much. But, yeah. So I had to take all that bark off the edge. And then I try to put one of the candles right here because you can see it more because of this little gap where there was uh, dead wood. And then that's like the inside of the knot. It's pretty cool. 
It's a nice curved up edge. So that's some of the stuff I made this weekend. Probably with the two sticks and that candle holder probably took me seven hours total to be done. From cutting it down to um, skinning it to sanding it to polishing it, everything for all the pieces together is like seven hours. So I don't know, pretty good day. I haven't done any staffs in a while. That's why I'm doing this video because I just want to share, you know, fun stuff too that I do in my free time. Um, I just finished my motorized bicycle uh, today. I can do another video and show you guys that if anyone would like to see it. And this is, I had a video on my channel, but I think I took it down. But this is the wool anorak I made. Um, I put it through the wash because it started smelling from being in the basement in storage. And uh, I got to re-sew it all. See, it's all, all coming apart here. But I hand-sewed this whole thing. There's like Gore-Tex inside here from a $4,000 North Face military tent that I had. I don't even know why I had it. It's just random stuff I collect. And this is a cell phone pocket right here. Or whatever you want to put in there. And uh, right there is two fighting knives um, that are down in the basement. They go in there in, the, in your back in case you get attacked by something in the woods. And then there's a double pocket side here. It's also inside. There's like the front material is camo. The back is like part of a jacket. This is the Gore-Tex. Waterproof all the way up through the whole hood is all Gore-Tex too. There's like five layers in here. And then these antlers, we found a deer in the woods that was dead and we took its antlers and um, added them to here for toggles to keep the coat tight. That took me like 16 hours to make that hand sew it. My fingers were like bleeding when I was done. And this is something else I'm working on right now. This is, um. That's just regular Gore-Tex, you can buy it on eBay. And uh, I got a super nice soft wool blanket up in Peterborough. I'm gonna glue it to the inside of that and then make it like a military poncho out of it. And it's not even, it's not too heavy. For the amount of warmth you got out of it, it's worth the, the heft of it. And these are two knives that I got recently. This one I got a couple of months ago. It's pretty awesome. Hold on, I gotta do this. Don't cut my fingers off. I'll do this one first because it comes right out. This one I got on Etsy. It's like a primitive knife. Super lightweight. It's like nothing. Yeah, that one's awesome. It's, that's probably my favorite out of all the knives I have. And it wasn't very expensive. Um, hold on, I gotta put the phone down and grab this. Yeah, I don't want to cut my fingers off. So this one was actually, um, I think it was Black Wolf Forge or something like that on Etsy. And all it, all it was was this, this hook blade, which is sick by itself, but it's very hard with my hands to grab that little piece effectively without cutting my hand wide open with this little claw right here, which I did sharpen way more. But so this piece of wood is from my childhood climbing tree. And I have a ton of stuff I've made with it. And um, I put this copper rivet through and a po use epoxy. And then this is like, um, got it's got black rope underneath it. And then I wrapped it with artificial sinew. But this thing is so deadly sharp. It's so sharp. But I mean, in your hand like this, even just knowing that you get that chunk right there to hold on to on the back end, it just gives you more like room to hook something you know because i use this all the time for you know just doing projects and stuff like that where you need to be you know pulling stuff or whatever so it's super it's super nice i th i think its application would be awesome also for like doing like kitchen stuff like chopping stuff in in the bush too but i haven't used it for that yet because 
I work a lot, so I don't have time to test these types of things right now. Just want to cut my hand off. So this, I'll show you the sheath. This is super nice. It's like the guy makes all of this stuff like super authentic. And he hand sewed it. I really appreciate people that do nice quality work like this because I do too. But the beadwork is really nice. And it's all actual um, hide material inside of there. So it's awesome. It's supposed to be a neck knife. I actually keep it in my pocket because the neck knife portion, it wobbles around on your neck like this. It's a pain. But I'm not, I, I actually keep this as my everyday carry now because it's like can't even tell you have it it's so light but it comes out of your pocket like when you try to grab it and comes out of your pocket like nothing but it doesn't fall out of the sheath it's it's just a perfect balance but i think what he did when he made it is see that line he cut it down the center and epoxied something in there to keep it from coming out but this blade i didn't know how sharp it was when i got it and i like i can't even see it anymore i nicked my oh yeah Right there. I nicked my knuckle and I was like gushing blood. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that was a little tour of current projects that I've been doing and uh, just the house in general. I had never talked about my wife that much in any of my stuff or showed pictures of us. So, I thought that might be nice for anyone that cares. And uh, God bless everyone and have a great day. Thanks.